Great is thy faithfulness. If you're able, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you exalted your Son to the place of all honor and authority. Enlighten our minds by your Holy Spirit that confessing Jesus as Lord, we may be led into all truth. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, Heather and Grant will sing, Greet the Rising Sun. And 
The Old Testament lesson is from the 18th chapter of Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the Son, is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. For the injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, when a wicked person turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he shall save his life. Because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions that he had committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, declares the Lord God. Repent and turn away from all your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed and make yourself a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord. So turn and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. We will read it responsively by whole verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways. O Lord, teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory, Glory be, be to, to the, the Father and, and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now and, and will, will be forever. forever. 
Amen. The epistle reading is from the second chapter of Philippians. St. Paul writes, If there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon this sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the Alleluia verse and the Gospel reading. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question, and if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or from man? And they discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from man, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell tell you by what authority I do these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his His only only Son, our our Lord, Lord, who was conceived conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended descended into hell. The The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe believe in the Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, the the Holy Holy Christian Christian Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We now sing the hymn, What God Ordains is Always Good, hymn 760.
Grace, peace, and mercy from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The sermon text is from the Gospel reading. And when he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Here ends the text. A pastor reflected back to his days when he was at Springfield Seminary in Illinois. A beloved Greek teacher would always begin a new term with the following statement. It is good to be asked questions. 
When you don't understand, asking helps us understand and get the right answer. Now, the good professor was correct, of course, but only in part. Questions will enable someone to understand as long as the question is asked for the right reasons and not to stir up dissension or to entrap an opponent. Well, in our gospel lesson, Jesus entered the temple and immediately he was surrounded by a group of chief priests and elders of the temple who had an important question for him. These were learned men, impressive, important individuals who were used to telling people all of the answers to their theological inquiries. But now, they question Jesus. By what authority are you doing these things? And part B, who gave you this authority? This really wasn't a bad question. It was an important question. It was, an, it was a question that could lead them to a greater appreciation of the Savior. It was a good question. It was a good question if they were willing to receive an answer. But sadly, they were not. They believed they knew the answer. Now before we get to that, they asked, by what authority are you doing these things? What were the things they were referring to? Well, it could be that they were referring to all of his works in general. All of his teachings about God and God's will for his people. The healings, the miracles, the times that he went against the traditions. But even more, they were probably thinking about the cleansing of the temple. Jesus had just a couple of days earlier cleansed the temple of the money changers and the merchants. He had confronted the leaders for making his father's house into a den of robbers. And this was no small incident. When Jesus disrupted the temple business, it was Passover time. It was a time when thousands of people flocked into Jerusalem. Business was brisk. What Jesus did by cleansing the temple would be a little bit like shutting down the malls the third week of December. His actions hit these leaders financially, and so they had questions. Or more accurately, for all of that, they thought they had answers. Earlier, they had expressed some theories about his authority. And they couldn't deny that Jesus had authority. They couldn't say that the miracles didn't happen. The results of his miracles were sometimes literally standing right before them. But what they tried to do was to proclaim that his authority had its roots in the evil one, in Beelzebul. The chief priests and the elders of the temple asked the question, about Jesus' authority. But their answer was that Jesus had no authority to do what he was doing. They believed that they only had authority to tell people about God and to tell people God's will for them. They believed that they were the only ones who had the authority to set rules for society and enforce those rules. They believed that they and they only had the authority to make judgments about who was in God's graces and who was outside of God's mercies. They believed that they were the only ones who had the right to make money in the temple. They even thought that they had the authority to extort the people of their resources in the name of God. They had the authority, or so they thought. The real question then behind their inquiry about Jesus' authority was the false understanding. We know that you don't have any authority from us, and we're the only ones who have authority, so who do you think you are? 
I love Jesus' response here. You know, Jesus knows the hearts of people. He knows their intentions. Now think about how you might respond to someone you knew was determined to destroy you. But Jesus responds to the question about his authority with patience and love. He asked them a question about John the Baptist's authority. It was a brilliant approach. It prevented the dialogue from going off course or hitting a stalemate. But certainly it was more than just a debating strategy. What is very clear from this approach is the message related in the Old Testament lesson for this day. In that passage from Ezekiel, we hear that it was God's desire that people would live. I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord. So turn and live. Throughout the Bible, God relayed the news that he doesn't want people to be destroyed. He wants people to have life and redemption. And that includes even those who were God-haters or those who were out for the sole purpose of destroying the Savior. Jesus' hope here is that these very hard-hearted religious leaders might repent and live. This is a remarkable testimony of our Savior's love and mercy. So Jesus directs him back to John the Baptist. You know, John the Baptist, you recall, was the forerunner of the Messiah. It was John who initially prepared the way for people to receive the Savior when he came onto the scene. And John's preparation consisted of a message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. So when Jesus directs them to reflect on who John the Baptist was, it was almost as if he was rolling back the tape. Let's start at the beginning. You fellows got off track, so let's go back and begin at square one. Let's think about who John the Baptist was. Where did John the Baptist get his authority? What was John the Baptist's message? Now, an honest answer here by these leaders might have been part of an 11th hour reprieve and a turning to the Messiah, who again had the greatest desire to see them live, turn and live. But note that the temple leaders did not even discuss what they believed about John the Baptist. Their only concern was how their answer might affect their authority and the power they had over people. It is clear from this that their authority had become for them an idol. They were determined to cling to that idol at all cost. May we ask the question that the temple leaders asked our Lord. Who gave you the authority to do these things, Jesus? But let's not do what they did. That is, let's not think that we have the answer before we hear what the Lord says. And the answer from God's word is clear. The authority of Jesus is from God. The word of God says it in numerous places. You know, Jesus pointed his initial questioners to John the Baptist. And what did John the Baptist say? Well, when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming onto the scene, he boldly declares Jesus to be the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus himself said, He who has heard me has heard the Father. After Jesus rose from the dead to defeat sin and death, he said, All authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. Jesus' authority is complete. There's no other authority greater than the authority of Jesus. And certainly that was the message that God announced on the Mount of Transfiguration. This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to Him. Paul said by His cross He has disarmed all rulers, all authorities, and put them to open shame by triumphing over them. Jesus has the authority. Jesus has the authority to speak for God. 
to do the works of God, and most importantly, to redeem a fallen world and to provide a way for believers to participate in the joys of eternal life. The Lord God, who has the ultimate authority, speaks to us today through his living word. You know, once when Jesus challenged Peter about falling away, Peter said to, to Jesus, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The words of Jesus are words of eternal life. And it is through the Holy Scriptures that we hear Jesus speak those living words to us today. When everything else in life fails, the Word of God endures forever. It provides the bedrock for our religious life. You know, Martin Luther said, God has revealed himself and is speaking to us through the word of God, the scriptures. Therefore, Luther prayed, Dear God, preserve thy word, for when it has been lost, we believe and adore anything. After it has been taken away, nothing is so absurd as not to be worshipped. We have the answer from God's word. From where does your authority come from, Jesus? Answer from God the Father. And in the authority of his word, we see and we know Jesus, we know his purpose for coming. The word is our authority in matters of life and salvation. However, Satan would have us doubt the authority of Christ. Satan would have us question the authority of the word of God. One of the evil ones, the devil's oldest tricks, is to have us believe that we personally have the final authority on all matters. This is the first sin committed. It's a sin which all other sins flow. In that perfect environment of Eden, the evil one approached Eve and encouraged her to ignore God's authority, the authority of his word to restrict her from eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and essentially to attempt to wrestle authority from him. The evil one asked her, did God really say? And he lies, telling her, you will be like God. In other words, Satan's message to our first parents was, why place yourself under God's authority when you can be equal to God? And the outcome of that deception has proved disastrous, not only for Adam and Eve, but also for all humanity right down to this very day. And certainly the devil tempts us to do that today, to disregard the authority of Christ, to ignore his word as our final authority for life and salvation. The devil still asks us, did God really say and we're still tempted with the desire to put ourselves on an equal level with the Almighty. If the devil can convince people to disregard God's word, to disregard the teaching and the preaching of it, then the end result is no different than the temple priests who harden themselves against Christ's grace. The end result is we forfeit the life that Christ wants us to have. C.S. Lewis dealt with the question of authority in his popular book, The Screwtape Letters. The book is written from the evil one's perspective, advising an apprentice devil how he can lure a new churchgoer into damnation. Not attending church, his devil supervisor reassured him, is not necessarily the solution to lead a person into perdition. In fact, the senior devil said, an apprentice might turn his victim's church attendance to the devil's advantage. The trick will be to get him involved in church politics, zealously attached to some party within the congregation, not on real issues of importance, doctrinal matters, but on indifferent things. 
when this happens, the worshiper begins to make himself a judge rather than a student. He assumes for himself the authority to criticize rather than to learn. Now, the senior devil says, you've got him speaking the words of the chief priests. By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you these authority? The encouragement by the Springfield professor to this student to ask questions certainly was a good recommendation. Questions are truly ways to find things out. May we ask the question, questions about our Savior, with an openness. And may we accept the answer that God gives us in his holy word. And upon an acceptance of the answer, may we be led to a greater appreciation of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray. God, we pray that your voice would be our ultimate and final authority. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, Heather and Grant will sing.
now stand for the prayer of the church. O Lord, we are your people, chosen by your grace to be your own possession, and granted mercy upon mercy. Hear your people who cry to you in need, and remember us according to the favor you have shown to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Make us to know your ways, O Lord, that we may walk in the path of salvation made known in your word. Hear our complaints and quiet them by your merciful deliverance, that we may respond with trust and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Encourage us, O Lord, by your Holy Spirit, that we may not lose heart, being of one mind and one will, May we serve you with gladness, doing the work of the kingdom, and speaking your word of hope throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, O Lord, to hold fast to your word and bless us with faithful pastors who will preach and teach your eternal gospel, that we may rejoice in doing your will. Guide those considering church work vocations and bless them as they are formed for your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shine your light upon us, O Lord, that we may do what is right and good and live as faithful citizens in our nation. Bless Justin, our Prime Minister, Doug, our Premier, and all those elected and appointed to make, administer, and judge our laws. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enlighten us with godly knowledge and wisdom, O Lord, and bless those who pursue science to improve our lives and the lives of those in greatest need. Bless all honorable vocations and all honest labor, and lead the unemployed to good jobs and noble work, not only for their own interests, but for the good of us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show us your compassion, O Lord, and in your mercy, grant healing, comfort, and peace to all those who suffer. Deliver them from their afflictions, pain, sorrow, and fear. We especially pray for Donald and Linda and all those we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, O Lord, to remember the faithful who loved and served you and who now rest from their labors. Bring us with them to that most blessed day when together we shall dwell in your presence on high forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us all good things needful for this body and life and profitable for our salvation and keep us from all things harmful that sustained in time of want and guarded in times of prosperity we may endure to the day of our Lord's coming and be judged worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. We now pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And now we sing our sending hymn, Go, my children, with my blessing.
Savior, comforter, and brother. 